Drinking is one of the few activities that if you don't partake, people assume or accuse you of having a problem. And it's just wild. There's a very different picture of a young drunk versus an old drunk. They become really infantile. It's not a pretty picture. There are so many better ways to have a good time that alcohol isn't necessary. Two drinks per week maximum is about the upper threshold. And I used to go to parties sometimes. I'd look around, I'm thinking like, everyone here is just blasted. Again, I, I don't tell people what to do. I, and give them the facts so they can make the best decisions for them. I mean, it's very clear that unless you're an alcoholic and provided you're an adult, that, you know, two drinks per week maximum um, is about the upper threshold. You know, I've never been a big drinker. I don't drink. Um, I, I'm lucky that it's not something that's, that's a strong draw for me. I, you know, I have friends that are recovered alcoholics um, and, you know, their lives are so much better as a function of being sober. But for non-alcoholics, I mean, I think everyone should just know the... Uh, the health risks, especially women where the risks for breast cancer and other types of cancers are, are elevated so very much. And what was interesting uh, to me about the response to that episode is that I think many people took it, uh, my, the impression I got was that many people took it as permission to finally stop drinking or drink less because they didn't enjoy drinking. And as you so you know beautifully put out on social media, you know, drinking is one of the few activities that if you don't partake, people assume or accuse you of having a problem. And it's just wild. I mean, like, why would that be? And I think that, I think it also make, w once actually I was out to dinner with a colleague years ago and I declined a drinking that evening. I was just talking to the, the visiting speaker and um, she said, God, that's so boring. And I, I, well, first of all, I don't have a problem saying what's on my mind without alcohol, right? I don't have, I don't have a excessive gabergic inhibition. Um, so I'll say what I want to say, um, you know, as, uh, as best I can. But, you know, I think drinkers don't like people who don't drink because it takes the fun out of it for them. Because there's this idea that's, you know, prolific on college campuses. Like if everyone's drunk, that somehow like the entire like vibe of the party is going to take on a new, new flavor. And, and frankly, I remember I went to a, a college, UC Santa Barbara, where at the time people drank a ton a ton of discovered alcoholics, you right? Um, and I used to go to parties sometimes. I'd look around, I'm thinking like, everyone here is just blasted. I had a habit of going out about once a month and I would tie one on. My tolerance to alcohol was always such that I would get drunk quickly and then sober up really fast. So I was drinking late into the night, um, but then I'd sober up really fast. Now, of course, we know the sleep you get after even one drink is vastly diminished. And I think that Alcohol to me um, never felt good. I never liked it. I, to me, it just feels like there's so there's so many better ways to have a good time that 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 alcohol isn't necessary. But I do understand that it's a big part of many cultures, and I do understand that for many people, it's so part and parcel with um, relaxing and with festivities mm. and with feeling comfortable and with drawing a boundary between the normal day and the rest of the day. But um, for me, I mean, I've, I'll go to a party where people are drinking and just hang out, I'm perfectly good. You know, the idea that like someone can quote unquote hold their liquor is such like a, it's been um, made synonymous with, you know, masculine ideals. It's like, I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy because we know it also it crushes testosterone levels. <laughs> What's interesting is that, um, you know, I forget who said this, but you know, there's a very different picture of a young drunk versus an old drunk. You know, someone who's been just drinking for too many years, it's not a pretty picture. They become really infantile. And, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm not the anti-alcohol crusader. I was accused several times uh, on Twitter slash X of um, taking all the fun out of parties, in the, at least in the Bay Area. But I'll tell you, I grew up in the Bay Area. The good parties ended a long time ago. And when I say other ways to have fun, I don't mean like, oh, everyone should sit around and do math or read neuroscience, although for me, that's fun. Um, you know, I think, th I think m in a broader sense, I think there's a shift nowadays that people really think about you know, how to engage socially in ways that are interesting. But, you know, people are starting to combine socializing with health promoting protocols and you know going out and eating good food together like eating really wonderful food um with the social component the you know i i'll go into the grave talking about getting morning sunlight something that maybe we should talk a little bit more about and as people like roll their eyes i'll just say there's this incredible study now just out in nature um, mental health published about 80 that has 85,000 85,000 subjects showing that 
the ratio of getting a lot of sunlight during the day to getting minimal artificial light exposure at night, it really sets the tone of your overall system and is, and is associated with brain and body, that is, and is associated with better mental health outcomes across the board. And the inverse, right? If you're getting too much artificial light at night or not enough sunlight or both, is associated with everything bad, elevate depression, anxiety, et cetera. Now, I do believe people should get out and have a good time. Don't avoid the bright lights of a city or a club. Yep. Have a great time, like dancing, socializing. Those are great reasons to stay up too late yep. and get minimal sleep or sleep in the next day. Great reasons. So every once in a while, sure, 10, 20% of your life, you're gonna do that. And you're probably some percentage of time is also gonna be raising kids. So you're up because you have to, to keep, keep them alive, which is important <laughs> to our species. So thank you. But I think people, you know, forget that, yes, you can go outside and get morning sunlight and which I highly recommend people do that as, as most people know, but I mean, so many benefits on mood and mental health and improved sleep that it you just, and it's completely zero cost, you know, but I often get accused of, okay, well, but what if you have kids? Like, how do you do this? Well, you take the kids with you because guess what? They need it too. You, you take them outside, you eat breakfast outside, or at least facing a window indoors. It's not going to be as good as having the window open or being outdoors. But even if the sun's on the other side of your apartment building, I mean, these things have an outsized positive effect on health. And I'll wager both upper limbs anyway, uh, that many, many, many of the mental health issues that we see nowadays in young people and in adults is the consequence of disrupted circadian rhythms because of a lot of time in a two-dimensional screen space, which I'm not condemning. I spend time on and put out most of my content on social media and YouTube, and Apple, Spotify, right? Um, and in addition to that, too, the lights are too bright at night and they're not getting enough sunlight during the day. And an important thing to understand about our circadian slash health, you know, circadian system and health is that throughout in the morning and throughout the day, your eyes are less sensitive to light and you need more of it in order to get what you need, okay, broadly speaking. And at night, your eyes are far more sensitive to artificial lighting and you need far less of it in order to disrupt your circadian system in bad ways, disrupt your mental health.